I'm here today with Fred Lane, who is a managing partner of Lane Generational, a fast-growing wealth management company. And Fred, cannot thank you enough for taking the time to sit down with me today. Really, really appreciate it. Before we begin, let's talk about your roots and what it was like growing up as a kid. I grew up in the Boston area. I'm a very, I was, had a very parochial upbringing. My father never took a vacation. He was a doctor. Uh, I thought I was going to become a doctor. Um, I remember going on rounds with my dad uh, at the age of five and six years old to the hospitals on Sunday morning. Because he was an OBGYN, I didn't get to stay in the room the whole time, of course, frequently. Uh, but um, it, it was really, in many ways, an idyllic upbringing. My father was a first-generation American, very upwardly mobile, so I was brought up with values that you would expect from a second-generation American uh, and the parents of a first-generation father who um, basically emphasized education. So at the age of 12, I went to a very rigorous school in the Boston area, a day school, all boys, which flunked out about 15 or 20 percent of the boys since the seventh and eighth grade, uh, called the Roxbury Latin School. And uh, I think that prepared me well for the real world because it was about digging in and getting the work done and so on. So I, I did not have the experience of high school that a lot of people might have. Uh, I didn't go on dates. I didn't have a social life. I played f three sports and that was, and I studied in school and that's what I did. And, th and then you went to, uh, you went to Harvard. Okay, and you went to undergrad and business school. I did, and actually Harvard was an interesting thing for me because I went to Harvard with the expectation that I would play basketball and run track. And I got recruited to row heavyweight crew at Harvard, which uh, actually opened my eyes to a whole different world that I don't think I would have been exposed to uh, in the absence of spending so much time at Newell Boathouse. Uh, a number of the oarsmen um, were from very well-off families, and they were very competitive people, uh, overachievers, I might add. And um, a number of them said to me, you should go to business school. And that made a big difference to me. And I said, well, gee, if everybody's telling me this, maybe I should explore that. So I did apply to Harvard Business School. And fortunately, I got in. And uh, I went directly from Harvard College to Harvard Business School. So I was in school essentially for six years. <laughs> Uh, and then I went to the business world. And how did you find your way to DLJ? It's great because we interviewed Tony James right. not too, too long ago and he gave us his story. But how did you find your way to DLJ? Tony, who was a Baker Scholar at Harvard Business School, the fact that he went there was, was either crazy or uh, incredibly uh, prescient on his part. But he, of course, he made a big difference in the growth of the firm and the success of the firm. A huge difference. Um, when we arrived at DLJ, and I, I went there a year later, uh, I had actually been recommended by a very good friend of mine, uh, a uh, venture capitalist here in New York named Art Spinner. So I think I was the eighth or ninth or tenth investment banker to join DLJ. We had some very bright people. The firm hired very um, individual, you know, individuals, iconoclastic people, eccentric people. Uh, uh, and it was, it was really a, a wonderful experience for me, a life experience. And, of course, we were in the, Tony and I, un, unbeknownst to us at the time, were in the right place at the right time in terms of the growth of investment banking. Fred, when and how did you decide to go into investment banking? So people will sometimes will say, well, gee, you know, you were so smart to get in the investment banking business. Well, first, I didn't get in the investment banking business because I was so smart. I got in the business because, A, they'd have me. And B, I thought it would be very, very interesting after working in the world of uh, public accounting, which I had done for three years after, after uh, Harvard Business School. And I found it to be an, such a fun business. Uh, I never felt I really worked a day in my life after being in public accounting. And I liked public accounting, but this was just a lot of fun. The variety of companies, the variety of personalities, the nature of the transactions, the importance of the transactions, the fact that you were looking forward in the business. Let, let me ask you this. In, in terms of investment banking today to the days when you got into it, a lot has changed. I mean, changed. my gosh, the regulation today is unbelievable, and is it necessary? Probably, in many ways. But would you advise young people today to get into uh, banking? When Tony went to DLJ, he knew he could make a difference. When I was joined DLJ, within a few years, I could see that I was making a difference. So we felt like we were really big years in a pretty small machine. And then we built a bigger machine, which was great. Uh, I think that's harder to do today. I still think the industry is a very attractive place to spend several years, if not longer, and to um, 
learn about the world of finance and the world of corporations and to see the other pieces that go into this. Um, you know, we have ha we've had a real um, fragmentation of the investment business. It used to be you either went public or you had limited options with respect to financing. That, that has changed enormously. The, the hedge funds are doing private equity. The private equity funds are raising their own hedge funds. Um, insurance companies and pension funds and so on are doing direct investments. They're buying companies outright in many cases. So the, the industry is becoming much more, uh, the financing industry has become much more fragmented and much more interesting and diverse, opening up opportunities. So I would say that the opportunities uh, elsewhere over time uh, are equally good or more attractive outside yeah. of investment banking. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, in terms of private equity and in terms of the venture capital business right now, do you feel like, um, I mean, everything goes through cycles. Do you feel like we're getting pretty much at a peak are we in a bubble right now? No, I don't think we actually are. And the reason I don't think that is because I think all returns, all expected invest, uh, internal rates of return, compounded returns, are going to be under pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, I was asked on Bloomberg this morning, what did I think the right assumption was for return in a portfolio for retirement purposes? And I said conservatively, but I feel confident in using this number, 6%. Now, six percent doubles every twelve years, so it's not shabby, mm -hmm. and that's why all all young people should be saving their money and letting the magic of compounding work. Uh, the institutional investor ha knows that the pension funds know that they know that that uh, that the public markets are going to provide them probably lower returns than th these alternative asset classes. Uh, they're be they'll they'll be very critical in monitoring that, however, and so. Um, you know, my own view is that while rates of return in private equity and venture capital will come down because of increased competition, uh, they will still be competitive. 